so hello aspirants in this particular session of the indian forestry we will be studying the forest soils and management this is included under your paper 1 of the forestry subject so let's start the first topic is your problem soils that is the kind of soils which have certain sort of problems due to which cultivation of trees or of crops is not happening properly so problem soils can be divided into two different types first one is your physical problem soils and the another one is your chemical problem soils in the physical problem soils you can see there are six different sort of problems that has been given in this chart and in the chemical problem soils there are five different sort of problems we will be going through them one by one so the first one is your slow permeable soil so what are slow permeable soils that is the water infiltration is not happening properly it is less than your 6 cm per day such sort of soils are called as slow permeable soils the solutions are like this you should apply huge quantity of river sand or the drainage facilities should be made properly then formation of contour is also necessary similarly organic matter usage is also there and then application of regent furrows in order to reduce the problem of your slow permeable soils then excessively permeable soil such soils in which the permeability rate is more than 70% or the quantity of the sand is more than 70% then it is called as your excessively permeable soil management is like this compact the field through rolling then apply your soil breeding then application of the organic material should be there similarly irrigation management and nutrient management should be there for the soil in order to reduce the problem then the next is your hard pan hard pan is a kind of a phenomena formed in the subsoil region where the roots cannot penetrate the subsoil the subsoil becomes so much hard due to the presence of iron and aluminum oxides because of which the roots of the trees cannot penetrate the subsoil region so what are the solutions the first one is that you have to do pluffing then organics should be applied similarly deep pluffing of the field is necessary so as to remove the hard pan of the subsoil and then cultivating deep rooted crops then the next problem is your surface crusting so such sort of crust are generally formed at the soil surface when your colloidal oxide of iron and aluminum are present in the soil then what are the solutions sprinkling of water is generally done then lime as well as organic materials are applied so as to treat your soil so the next is your fluffy soil so these soils as the name suggest has low mechanical strength and why does this happen because of continuous rice cultivation so what are the solutions the first one is that the irrigation should be stopped 10 days 10 days before the harvest and the second one is that under semi dry conditions do compacting then the next is your water logged and marshy soils so when the water table is raised and it reaches the surface of the soil and the entire soil is covered due to water marshy conditions generally develop so the management techniques in order to treat such sort of soils are the provision of sufficient drainage that is drainage facility should be proper then appropriate land usage should be there and then utilization of the land for your aquaculture so these are the various techniques through which this particular problem can be solved so the next one is your acidic soil previously we were seeing the physical problems now we are going to see the chemical problems which are present in the soils so if acidic soil is there now what does this mean by acidic soil so the soils which has ph value less than your 6.5 again the soils the soil structure is massive and the soil is low in the calcium as well as magnesium minerals so genesis why this problem actually occurs because of the high rainfall acidic rainfall even the parent material or the parent rock material is acidic and fertilizers that we are using are forming the acids what are the management measures or how we should control the problem of acidic soil firstly lime organics or bio fertilizers should be utilized then leguminous crops should be used and certain plant species or the tree species are also helpful in removing the problem of acidic soil that is your albizia procera and gamelina arborea so these tree species we have already saw during the silviculture of tree silviculture of indian trees lesson if you haven't seen you can access the video from the playlist then the next is your salt affected soil so when salts or excess salts are present in the soil then such sort of problems occur there are various types of salt affected soil 
like saline soil alkaline soil similarly saline alkaline and then degraded alkali soil or degraded alkaline soil so remember these four types because in the previous examination of forestry paper upsc has asked what are the different types of salt affected soil now the first one is your saline soil so which soils are called as saline soil where electrical conductivity is greater than 4 and the salts of chlorine and sulfate are dominant similarly the ph is going to be less than 8.5 and soil have white encrustations so remember these four aspects the four characteristics of your saline soil genesis is like this that is alkaline rock is a parent material or the arid and semi arid environment is there poor poor drainage capacity as well as in the low lying areas generally saline soils are formed similarly if the water table is high or the capillary rise is there because of which the entire region is covered by water generally we are going to see saline soil then the next one is your alkaline soil so these are also called as sodic soil so this is important you should remember that alkaline soils are also called as your sodic soil they are formed due to the accumulation of exchangeable sodium so over here the exchangeable sodium potential or percentage is greater than 15 ph is also greater than 8 and the soil aggregates are dispersed internal drainage capacity is very poor and the soil pores are generally plugged the next one is a saline sodic soil over here electrical conductivity is greater than 4 and exchangeable sodium percentage is greater than 15 soils are flocculated and the ph is less than 8.5 the next one is a degraded alkali soil so over here esp is greater than 15 that is exchangeable sodium percentage and then the ph is low as well as they do not have precipitated calcium carbonate so how to treat these sort of salt affected soil so we have to see the treatment procedure over here we can see that there are three different methodologies that is physical chemical and biological in the physical method deep ploughing should be there then drainage proper drainage capacity should be provided as well as sand filling so that infiltration should be proper and drainage should be enhanced so these are the physical methodologies then in the case of chemical methods gypsum is generally used along with that sulfur sulfuric acid as well as iron sulfate are used for soil reclamation or land reclamation then biological methods addition of the organic matter and sometimes the plant species or the tree species like as a direct indica as well as your prosopis juliflora are also used in order to treat the salt affected soils so the next topic is the difference between your forest soil and the cultivation soil in the case of forest soil you are going to find this soil in the forest region whereas in the cultivation soil you are going to find that soil in the agriculture area so forest soil is ger generally develop under the natural conditions whereas cultivated soil is influenced by humans activity organic matter content in the case of forest soil is high however in the case of cultivation soil it is less similarly litter fall is generally helping the forest soil to maintain a kind of shade thus the forest soil will have a less temperature however in the case of cultivation soil because litter fall is not that much high because of which the moisture content is less it is not uniform as well as the temperature is also less so these are the various differences you just go through them and try to remember at least four to five differences that will suffice for writing a proper answer the second thing is that how the soil is getting formed or what is the process of soil formation so the first one is your weathering if you have taken geology subject then you must have studied about weathering even in the geography or geography subject of your civil services examination you must have studied what is weathering so the same thing the similar process over here also to understand the process of soil formation so weathering is again divided into three types physical chemical and biological physical there are various sub methods like change in the temperature change in the pressure or the wetting and drying as well as frost wedging due to these processes the soil is getting formed in the case of chemical weathering oxidation is there reduction hydration carbonation as well as your hydrolysis so these are the various chemical methodologies or the chemical sub methods through which your soil is getting formed next is your biological in which plants and organisms do play an important role in the formation of soil
Then the development of true soil, there are certain methods in which a soil is getting formed. For example, like addition of water and the minerals are there so as to enhance the organic content. Then after that, removal of these materials from the soil itself, then translocation of these materials and then the transformation of these materials in order to form a proper soil. So these are the fundamental soil forming process. The second one is your the specific soil forming process. Previously we saw fundamental soil forming process. Now the specific soil forming process that is humification, calcification, salinization, desalinization, etc. So these are the specific soil forming process. You don't have to like mug up the in-depth knowledge about humification, calcification, salinization. You just have to remember the names because uh, if in the upcoming examination might be they are going to ask so write the specific soil forming process you just have to write the names you don't have to like write about what is humification or what is a calcification process you just have to mention the names that will suffice then what are the factors affecting soil formation there are various factors like your climate organisms then your relief topography then the transient material or the parent material similarly time so this is the mnemonic that is C-O-R-P-T. So you can remember through this particular thing that these are the factors which affect your soil formation. So the next one is the properties of soil. In the case of properties of soil, UPSC is keen to ask about the textures. For two, three times they have asked about the textures, like what are the different textures of the soil. So you just remember this particular table that it is generally divided into four parts that is sandy, loamy, clay and silt. Again, in the case of sandy, it is subdivided like sandy loamy, sandy clay and sandy clay loamy. In the case of loamy, there is another thing that is called as loamy sandy. Then in the clay, there is clay loamy and then in the case of silt, there is silt clay, silt loamy and silt clay loam. So these are the 12 different types of the textures. Remember this thing, they have already asked about it multiple times. So that's why it becomes important. Again, in the case of color, in the Manikandan book, there is this chart that has been given that is Mansell color chart. You have to just remember the name that is Mansell color chart is used to determine the color of the soil to identify the color of the soil and Mansell color chart comes in three different subtypes that is U, value and chroma. The color chart uses these values that is U, value and chroma in order to determine the specificity of the soil. Then in the case of structure, there are four different types of structure like spherical, platy, blocky and columnar. So the soil is formed from various sort of components or from various sort of materials. Those materials have specific shape. Through that shape, we are determining the structure of the soil. So if the shape is present of spherical nature, if the material is of spher spherical nature, then we are going to call it as that the structure of the soil is spherical. Similarly, platy, blocky and columnar. Then these are different other physical properties. We are not going into them. The chemical properties you must see that soil reaction is there, then electrical conductivity, cation exchange capacity, anion exchange capacity and basic saturation. Just remember the names that is going to be more than sufficient. Then the next topic is your soil organic matter. Now what is soil organic matter? It means that kind of organic content that is present in the soil. So there are various factors which affect the soil organic matter like climate, natural vegetation, similarly your texture, then the drainage, then your cropping and tillage, then your soil available nutrients that is that kind of nutrients that are present in the soil. So these are the various factors which affect your soil organic matter. Then the components of soil organic matter. See this particular chart is important. If a question is going to be asked on soil organic matter, just made this chart that will be more than sufficient to fulfill the demand of your answer. So soil organic matter is divided into two parts like living organism from living organism, soil organic matter is made and then from the dead parts, soil organic matter is made. Dead or dead soil organic matter is again subdivided into two different types like unaltered products and then transformed products and in the transformed products we have humic substance and non-humic substance. Now this humic substance is important because they generally ask the formation of humus. And that is your lignin theory of humus formation. They have asked about this thing that what is the lignin theory of humus formation. This chart tells that how from the lignin humus is getting formed. 
So consider this particular first part that is from lignin we are getting lignin building units and from lignin building units these are utilized by microorganisms to form humus. Then consider this part that is after the microbial attack on the lignin you are going to get the residuum. Then after residuum again microorganism microorganisms will act on the residuum and you will get humic acid and after that you will get fulvic acid. So you just have to mention this particular chart make this chart and that will fulfill the demand of the answer. Then soil classification in the textbook there are various types of soil classification that has been given this particular thing that is your docu-shape genetic system is important and according to docu-shape genetic system a soil is classified into three different types that is zonal, azonal and intrazonal. Zonal, azonal, intrazonal we have already studied during our geography subject in the civil services examination the same definition is over here also that is if a particular soil is forming in a given zone that is it is defined by a fixed sort of boundaries then it is called as your zonal soils for example pot zone in the case of a zonal soil let's say if the soil cannot be defined from a particular set of boundary and it is forming in different sort of zones then it is called as your azonal for example like your alluvium soil and intrazonal soil that is a soil is forming in different sort of zones different zones are there boundaries are also there and it, it is generally forming in different zones not in a specific zone but different zones so that is called as your intrazonal soil so remember this particular docu shape genetic system then previous year questions so explain soil organic matter we have already saw this thing then what is the difference between your saline soil and sodic soil again it is explained and then soil plays crucial role in the management of forest explain so it is a very general question you have to write like how the soil helps in enhancing the forest helps in enhancing the biodiversity tree species how different sort of soils play crucial role in the growing of the tree species different sort of tree species but also Remember that you have to write examples. If you forget to write examples, then the answer is going to be seen as very generic. Just try to mention two or three examples and that will be more than sufficient to get or to fetch better marks. So that's all for this particular lecture of Indian forestry. In the next session, we will see some more interesting topics regarding Indian forestry. Till then, thank you.